all that shit is fucking natural comedy. But back to what this. the fuck was I talking about? We're talking about this. the the this the this. They got like hard times from once. They they tune you up once a week, but last week they broke my heart because Enter the Dragon was supposed to start at nine o'clock. There was nothing else on. I went to t watch Enter the Dragon. I wanted to watch it just the beginning, the the fucking when he smacks the Chinese kid in the head, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see when he fights fucking the guy in the in the Chaolin Temple. But it was something else. It was like double dragons. These white kids on skateboards in the eighty. I, I, I they cracked me, so I switched it. But I started watching the fucking wire. I asked my wife, you ever watched the wire? She's like, it's been a while. I go, dog, it's been such a while for me. I blacked out. I know one thing about the wire, that Dominic Lombardozzi, we had him on the podcast. I do his podcast from time to time. He was on there. And I really forgot. Next time he does the podcast, that's the fucking episode we're doing. Is on the fucking wire, how he got the job, why. I don't know if you've seen the why, you haven't seen the why. I'm up to like episode 10, maybe 12. Every night we've been watching one or two episodes. Guys, I got to be honest with you. It's up there with the fucking Sopranos. I like it the way better than I like the show on whatever with the speedheads and shit, you know. The one about New Mexico when they're down there making meth and shit. That was okay for me. I, yeah, I, I, I didn't bite the chomp there for some reason. I'm really a Sopranos guy, but this fucking wire is making me think twice. It's reevaluating my fucking, you know. I got overtaken by the Paisans there for a couple of years. But, man, if uh, you haven't seen the wire, I think it's on HBO Mac or HBO Plus. I don't know what they even call it. 92 HBO. Have you ever put HBO on? HBO Latino, HBO Family, HBO Comedy, HBO fucking Russia. I'm lost with HBO. I know that I have that particular app on my... I used to take it on the road when I on my little iPad, so I, I don't know what the fuck it's it is. HBO Max, man. HBO Max. HBO Max, that's what it is. But uh, talking about, you know, the sports advisors... Yeah, and I still remember. So, 93, I finished, and then I went back in 94. I went to work for one of their friends for a few weeks during the summer. Fucked up guy. He broke away from them. And then my man, Kurt, called me, and he goes, hey, you can't work for that dude. He goes, how much you want a week? Because they, you know, the first year they give you a guarantee versus commission. So he asked me, I told him a number, and he goes, done. Come to work. I was like, what? So I'm going to make some money by 94. By 94, I started gaining time on my comedy. I started fucking, you know, I had 20 minutes. I had opened up for Carlos Mencia with the Loco Slam comedy. We did a tour of four cities. That gave me a little confidence. I was also getting a lot more love from the comedy works. Uh, I was done. I had gotten fired from the Boulder Broker the year earlier, so I was out of there on Tuesdays. I didn't have that commitment anymore. But it was time for me to fucking move on. That wasn't a job forever anyway. And now I was out there doing spots every fucking night. Sunday through fucking Thursday, I was out there. Plus, McKelvey's gave me guest sets during the weekend. So I would either do McKelvey's or Wits End. I had a bag of dick at Wits End. Plus, I started there as a doorman. Plus, the owner didn't like me. So once I had a bag of dicks there, he cut me off in that club. So on the weekends, I would just do four sets at McKelvey's. But at the same time, I was starting to pick up weekend work. Bill Bauer was taking me to Wyoming. Ooh, my career was on a fucking move, Jack. You know, I was doing Greeley on Thursday nights. Now I didn't have to do that fucking Italian guy's restaurant anymore. I was getting better bookings. I was making $50 a show now. So I was making a little bit of fucking money at night. And then uh, there was this booker named David Tribble. And that's where you graduate. You know, I'm sure there's a booker around here when your band gets together. It's not the tour of lightning. It's not, you know, the guy that, it's not Roger Graham, whatever his name is, out of San Francisco. This guy's name is Louis Lepke. He's probably missing a fucking eye. He, ch he chisels you on every fucking gig. 
When you get there, they're not paying. They send the check 45 days later. Each musician could only get three beers. <laughs> Food is uh, full price, but fucking, you're going to get shit blood if you eat it. You know, there's a thousand fucking stories. Who, that's what it is. And dog, I know the comedy world, so I know how the comedy fucking world works. And the first year is just atrocious, and you work for horrific fucking people. So, uh, I had been the house MC at the broker. The broker was a triple run on Tuesday nights. Wednesday you had off. Thursday Greeley. Friday or something underneath. Uh, uh, Crested Butt. Crested Butte. Crested Butte was Friday. And then you ended up in Colorado Springs on Saturday. And it was an okay run. It sucked dick. Who am I lying to? Uh, you, know, you had to drive fucking eight hours in between. You had to hit a fucking deer. <laughs> so I was a house MC, and he was hearing things about me. And I finally had the balls to send him like a tape that August, and I never heard from him. So I, I remember sending a tape to this other comedy duo, Dana and Doug McGraw, out of fucking Nebraska. I had taped this set at a at Club Mix. This was a, a like a a black club that was a gang club. And you, I would go down there every Sunday. They gave me love. It was on East Koufax. Are you kidding me or what? So I would go to every fucking Sunday night. And that was me and uh, the vet from Animal Planet were the only white dudes they liked. So we'd go down there. We'd open up the fucking show. But you know who was coming up then? Cedric. D.L. Ugly. You know, all these guys were getting flown in there on Sunday nights. And I was opening for them and meeting them. Kwame. I mean, I met so many fucking people that were great. Then the, the club ended because there was a shootout and there was no more comedy. I went up there on a Monday. There was fucking those things everywhere. There was cops there. They, yeah. they shot two people. It was tremendous, tremendous. Always gives that comedy room an edge. I dare you to sell out on that motherfucker. <laughs> so I was having a good, good fucking time doing comedy. I was making money with them. Now, I was supposed to stay that year. I was going to give it a shot till Final Four basketball. I had a job. Kurt told me I could keep my job till Final Four basketball. I was very happy. I was going to make two extra months of money. By the time I got out of that office, it would be nice weather anyway. I would go to doing comedy and delivering fucking Chinese food. And if you got to sell some Coke... We do what we do. I was in such a hole back then, guys. I couldn't get ahead if I was selling my asshole for 10... You know, I, I, I would never get ahead back then. There was no way. I was in no fucking danger of getting ahead there. 